Mad Movie Mark with another Mad Movie Mark movie review, continuing the monumental task I've given myself of watching all the movies that are 100% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Now, I um, am taking out the documentary, so that leaves 206 movies, and I am on number seven, and I do believe that this is the last silent movie that I will need to watch to complete this list. Uh, this makes me kind of sad because there were so many movies made and yet there are only seven that are 100% fresh when it comes to silent pictures. Uh, there are a lot of reasons for this. I think probably the main reason is there was some rogue critic who wanted to be that one guy who messed up a 100% fresh rating for a really, really fantastic movie and then it ended up getting 99% instead. Uh, I think that it's uh, really sad that this happens and maybe they need to de develop a new system so that great movies can't be destroyed by one bad rating. Uh, but here we are. So I am doing the 1928 movie, The Man Who Laughs. Anyone who is a super fan of Batman or a super fan of the Joker will know that this uh, character of Gwen Plain was the inspiration for the Joker from the Batman comics. Uh, I did not know this uh, going into the movie. I kind of figured it out as I was watching it and I realized that has a striking resemblance to the Joker. And then in the middle of the movie, I did some Googling and I realized yes this is the uh, material that they used for the Joker um, so when I realized that this was very early on to the movie I thought that th this guy was going to be a villain just like the Joker was uh, but that turned out not to be true they went a different way with this movie and I think that uh, the direction they went in was really good this by far is the longest movie that I've done uh, uh, as far as lengthwise for a silent film. A lot of the silent movies I've watched thus far have been about an hour and 10 minutes. I think an hour and like 30 minutes was the longest one, uh, but this one has a running time of about two hours, so it is the longest uh, silent film that I needed to watch, so the fact that it's the last film I think is fitting that it's also the longest film. So this movie uh, stars Mary Philbin, who is D, Conrad Vietz, who is Gwen Plain, and then Olga Blacklanova, who is Duchess jo Josiana. There are other stars in this uh, movie as well, but the movie basically revolves around Gwen Plain and Dia. So the movie starts with Gwen Plain's dad, who's a nobleman. He is basically killed because he refuses to uh, kiss the hand of another nobleman. After he's killed, his son is uh, given away to a group of gypsies. Now these group of gypsies, their sole lot in life is to disfigure children so that they can be used in carnivals and sideshows. Um, the main protagonist, Gwen Plain, is one of these kids who uh, is disfigured. So after he is sold to these gypsies, he is abducted by a traveling showman, uh, and he is put on display as the man who laughs. His disfigurement is that they uh, cut his face in a way to where he looks like he's always smiling, even when he's sad. He can't change his facial expression. It's just constantly in a uh, smile-type expression. Um, the main protagonist, Gwen Plain, also finds another child who uh, he basically, um, you know, takes on as kind of an adopted child, and that is D. D is blind and is unable to see what uh, Gwen Plain looks like. So uh, you have Gwen Plain who is severely disfigured and D who is blind. Uh, D will end up being the love interest of Gwen Plain. Uh, she is the only one who can't see what he looks like. And in the movie, she even says, uh, God uh, took away my sight so I could see what you really look like. So and D, the movie basically revolves around D really struggling with who he is and with his disfigurement. He thinks that he is impossible to love, that everyone who looks at him will laugh, and that no one will be able to look at him and, you know, have that attraction to him because of the way he looks. Um, he's basically spent his whole life, whole life being bullied and being tormented for the way he looks, and uh, this sideshow that he's in doesn't help it at all because every time he gets on stage uh, people just start laughing at him because of the way he looks and uh, this leads him to have a very bad self-esteem so uh, in the movie he ends up meeting Duchess Josiana uh, he really believes she she sends him a letter that says she went to his show and that she didn't laugh at him 
and uh, he really believes that maybe this is someone who can love me for who I am. So he goes to meet her, and then uh, she eventually gets a note that says that uh, Gwynplaine, they realize that Gwynplaine was a nobleman, uh, he was, his father was a nobleman, and that he's the heir to the throne. Heir, he, he's the heir, basically, to all the riches that come with uh, the noble life. So she gets this note, and she realizes that if she wants to uh, kind of maintain the type of life she's living, that she needs to eventually marry Gwen because she needs his money. Uh, when she gets this note, she starts laughing, and uh, and then all the hope that he had of having this relationship with her basically uh, disintegrates. He goes back, and he uh, meets uh, Dee, and he tells her what happened, and then she says that she's in love with him. Uh, and then they start actually developing this love towards each other at that point. Um, uh, after this point, Gwynplaine is arrested, and after he's arrested, uh, basically they lie to everyone and say that Gwyn was killed while he was in prison. Uh, this makes Dee very uh, emotionally distraught to where she's on stage, and she uh, kind of passes out because she's so distraught. She continues uh, basically through life uh, kind of not living, sort of living but not living because she's lost the love of her life. Uh, Gwen actually has not died in prison. Um, they keep him in prison and they tell them, they tell him that he's going to have to marry uh, Duchess Josiana because he is uh, the heir to the th to the throne basically because he was a nobleman's son. He's the heir to the riches. So when he when he's in uh the throne room kind of being um told what he's going to have to do d and uh her um group are told that they have to leave leave england that they're banished from england uh i believe that this is because they don't want uh they don't want gwen to meet up back up with d and fall in love they want d to uh think like Gwen is dead so that they don't get married because if they get married, then uh, Duchess Josiana will no longer have the riches that she wants. So she's basically trying to make it so that uh, she will not lose what she wants. Uh, eventually, at the end of the movie, Gwen uh, playing renounces his uh, right to the throne. He ends up finding D, and uh, they end up together, and they end up going off into the sunset to England, essentially. Uh, so I thought this movie was really good. Uh, I do have the length of the movie was a little bit long for me. Uh, I do like though how they didn't make this character uh, evil, even though they could have very easily done that. The movie is about his struggle, about uh, his plight in life, about how he was handed this uh, raw hand that he didn't deserve, um, and how basically the world has decided for him what he's going to be and who he's going to be and he just wants to be this other person he wants to be uh he wants to be in love he wants to not be laughed at all the time he wants to be taken seriously uh he wants things that he's never had before and it's the uh the fight within himself and the fight with uh humanity to be able to get these things that he needs uh and i thought that um Conrad did a very Conrad Veep did a very good job with this. Uh, he is kind of the actor of silent film that was was made for this type of role. Uh, he, I mean, his acting is amazing. Halfway through the film, you forget that he actually doesn't have this disfigurement. Uh, it's almost like he was born with it, and now that he's living with it, that's how much he sells it. Uh, you you start feeling really bad for him because you get sucked into this movie and um, you you know you you feel bad for these characters you feel bad for D because she really loves him and Conrad doesn't believe that he could ever be loved and she doesn't understand why he thinks that and she just wants to love him and she wants to be loved back and at the same time he just wants to love someone and feel loved back as well and uh they're kind of not meeting at, at the same time with the same idea until later in the movie and then at the end uh after he goes through all this and he finally gets the courage and the ability to fight against the people that have uh 
knocked him down throughout his entire life and he's finally able to kind of be his own person and break away from all that and uh, put his foot down and be like, no, this is not the kind of life I'm going to live just because you guys want me to. I've been doing what everyone wants to do, uh, wants me to do my entire life and I'm going to do what I want to do. And I thought this was uh, really good. Uh, the movie to me is 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 a really good movie. Uh, I'm not. I don't think it's on the scale of great, but I do think that what they were trying to do in the movie, they succeed and they accomplish. And um, but like I said, the movie was a, a little bit long for me. It did take me a little while to kind of get into it, uh, to kind of really be rooting for these characters. And it was kind of a, a slow uh, spin, a slow yarn for me. Um, but, you know, I still recognize how great it is. I still recognize the acting performances here. And I still recognize, uh, you know, that in an age of sometimes in silent movies, people are like pantomiming and sometimes people are, uh, you can really tell who the great actors are and who the great actors aren't. And uh, he is a great actor and she is a great actor, actress as well. And I think at the end of the day, uh, I'm going to give this movie an eight uh, because as although I don't particularly think it was great, uh, I think that it was very good and 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 an eight is still a very a very uh, fantastic score. So I'm going to give it an eight and uh, with that we end the silent movie era of this countdown and uh, my next movie will be 1931's Frankenstein. Thank you. I hope you have a great day. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,